Hey y'all. <sighs> Welcome to my channel. I'm Kaylin May. And today I just wanted to give you an update on what I've been reading. I never did a June wrap up and realistically, I only read two books in June. I read The City We Became, which I did a whole review of, and I read one other book, which I'll talk about in just a second. Um, but I just wanted to reframe reading periods of time. I think I'm somebody who is a very type A person. I'm somebody who does what I don't have on me, who does well with checklists, with goals. Um, I am very good at school. I am good at like, you know, I'm one of the reasons I'm an event producer <laughs> is because I can plan in advance and I can divide up timelines and, and budgets and I can, you know, keep people on track, including myself. I can have a level of discipline and forward thinking. And in that regard, things like monthly wrap ups uh, hit my dopamine button <laughs> in a lot of ways in that it's like, this is what I accomplished in this month. And this is the number of books I've read in this month. Um, but recently I've been trying to move away from qualifying the types of work I've been doing or the production, the amount I can produce and moving away from that way of thinking, which is not to say it's a bad way of thinking. And it certainly served me incredibly well in my life. When I started this channel, it was not to become the world's best YouTuber. It was not to um, read the most books of any person. And it was not to fill the place of work, which has been shifting for me recently uh, since the pandemic. Coping with that, I wanted to set up a channel where it was like every you know two times a week I was uploading a video and I knew that Monday I would film, Tuesday I would edit, Wednesday I would upload, Thursday I would film, Friday I would edit, Sunday I would upload, and so on and so on and so on. And I really needed a structure at the beginning of that period of time, this period of time, that I, I don't feel as tied to anymore. I think I found routine in other places. Um, and I think I've found structure in other places. And I think that right now I'm more interested in exploring reading as something I love to do and making these videos as something I really enjoy and as a way to learn more skills and to push myself to be creative, um, but not necessarily to measure output. So I'm trying to move myself away from worrying about how many videos I put out a month and uh, how many books I read in a month and the number of subscribers I have or the number of people who comment on a video because I don't want this to turn into that for me. And I think it, it sort of did because I think as soon as I can get into that and see a little bit of success off of it, um, it hits that dopamine button for me. It's like, oh, I read 11 books in April. That's incredible. That's beyond incredible. And then when I read five the next month and two the next month, it feels like I failed somehow and I don't want to feel that way and I don't think I want to structure it that way. So while I will be loving and watching everyone else's and fully supporting everyone else's monthly wrap ups, I'm no longer going to do that. Um, I'm just going to tell you about the books that I read and I may do individual reviews on a couple if I along the way as I feel like I want to and I may not and do just sort of like what I'm going to do today, which is tell you what I've been reading over the past four weeks or so. Um, and what I've been thinking about them and how I've enjoyed it. And I think I'm going to focus on that on the process rather than the product um, and try and stay away from the super structured um, goal driven way of being. And I'm sure booktubers have talked about this before and run into this before. And I think as people who are academic, you know, I think a lot of people who read quite a bit are academic and people who have learned to crack the academic puzzle tend to, to have these strategies um, pretty firmly in place. And, and I'm trying out some new strategies right now, which include sort of openness and uncertainty and being close to my own experience and focusing on how things feel and what I enjoy and how I want to spend my time and being intentional about things. I talked about that a little bit in the last video. So with that being said, that's a really long sort of almost disclaimer. These are the books I've been reading recently. So as I said, I only really read two books in June. The first being The City uh, We Became by N.K. Jemisin. I loved, I uh, have that in the description, the my review, I did a whole review on it in the description box below. 
The second being The King's Justice, A Maggie Hope Mystery uh, by Susan Elia McNeil. And okay guys, these are like my guilty pleasure books. I, this is like the 12th one, the seventh one? There have been so many of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is the ninth one uh, in the series so far. And it follows this woman, Maggie Hope, who um, was a secretary for Winston Churchill. Mr. Churchill's secretary is the, the first book in the series. And she turns into a spy. And it's just like very specific women spy World War II era genre that I just love. I love it. I loved um, reading uh, The Seamstress, The Time in Between. Um, and I love, I love the Maggie Hope novels. So I, I didn't love, like, I feel like the, they were really, really strong. They had a couple of ones that were just sort of like, not my favorite. And then this one came back really strong. So this was quite a dark Maggie Hope mystery. She has a very specific personality type. Um, again, very committed, very um, di disciplined, very type A, very resourceful, um, hopeful, true to her ethics and her morals. And in this one, she is suffering. Uh, she is disillusioned. She's angry. She's bitter. She is smoking a lot and drinking a lot and um, flirting with danger in ways that aren't healthy. She's got some really, yeah, unhealthy coping mechanisms and she's just struggling. And, um, and you watch her as she tries to navigate a relationship and a career after being disillusioned with one that gave her so much validation at one point in time and, and meaning and purpose. Um, and she's felt betrayed and she's, she's disappointed in folks that she used to idolize. And I loved it. I loved reading this darker Maggie Hope. And I loved watching her just process through things and, and figure it out. And um, it really, it really brought new life into the series. And I, I'm imagining there will be more and I will read them, each and every one of them. Um, but yeah, I, I love sit, like hanging in with a character over the long term. And I especially love if that character goes through ups and downs and changes and grows. Cause I feel like I've been struggling during this pandemic and I've been going through a lot of growth and changes. And so it's been very cool. It was very cool to read a book where the main character was also. So I read the Maggie Hope um, mystery, The King's Justice. Then the other sort of mystery book I read uh, recently, and I just finished this last week, is The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. And uh, this book was so good, guys. I highly recommend it. I gave it a five out of five. And it takes place in Barcelona in the 1940s. It's a gothic novel. It's a mystery. There are love interests that are requited and unrequited and doomed. Um, there is a creepy mansion, there are murders. It's just, it's a, such a good book for those who love books. The main characters, uh, the main character grew up uh, with his father owning a bookshop and there's this like wonderful place called the Cemetery of Forgotten Books. So you have a bookshop owner and his son and the Cemetery of Forgotten Books book collectors, an author plays a pivotal role in this, Julian Carax, and uh, his book, The Shadow of the Wind, is there, it just starts a mystery that just starts to unravel in, in many directions. And um, you see publishers and, and just, you know, it, it just, it's, a, it's set in, it's set with book people. And it's, it's set in a Barcelona that has, um, gone through a, a really hard time and is about to go through another one. Individually, these characters suffer quite a bit and they uh, have great loves and great disappointments and betrayals. And it also just showed the time really well. Like seeing the women in this book be very constricted by the time was really interesting and sad and um, seeing women try and sort of press against those constrictions and be met with forceful patriarchal violence and disapproval. 
I loved this. I would highly recommend it. It's over 500 pages again. No, it's only, it's almost 500 pages. It's like 480 pages. It's a little bit of a longer book and uh, it's lush. It's lush. You fall into it and um, you just want to know what happens. There was even a couple of scenes where I'm kind of a scaredy cat and I had to come out into the living room and read them aloud to Jonathan so that I like could get through them because I got nervous and jumpy. But yes, I loved it. I would highly recommend it. A1. Okay, the next book I read, which I finished literally yesterday, is Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng. And she's the author of Little Fires Everywhere, which I read a couple months ago. Um, and this book follows, it's in Ohio in the 1970s, and it follows this family. Um, it's a father, a mother, and three kids. Uh, the father's James, the mom is Marilyn, and then you've got Lydia, no, the oldest is Nath, then Lydia, then Hannah. And it just really follows their family dynamic in the wake of Lydia's death. Um, so the very first line of the book is Lydia is dead. So right off the bat, you know, um, this is an exploration of grief. It's an exploration of family. It's an exploration of being Asian American in the United States, especially during the 1970s, during a period of a lot of um, discrimination. And also it is about an interracial marriage. So Marilyn is white and James is Chinese American. And it's just, it's, it's about wanting, it's about wanting to fit in. It's about wanting to stand out. It's about just sort of like, how how to, how the world can be oppressive whether it's through patriarchy and you know Marilyn's dreams of wanting to be a doctor being you know really doubted and smashed and destroyed um or James wanting to fit in and, and constantly being um stared at and had racist slurs you know thrown at him or just people telling him that he doesn't belong places or he doesn't he shouldn't be married to who he's married to and and this constant feeling of not belonging and racial discrimination or in being a daughter and having and holding a kid and holding the weight of your parents happiness and expectations and how oppressive like other people's dreams forced on you can feel and the toll that takes so this book um explores all of those themes really beautifully um i would give it like a 3.5 and a 4 uh, stars and it's it's it its best moments are the moments where you're watching how people uh, relate to one another and um, I thought that was very strong so that is everything I never told you by Celeste Ng and then the last book I read that I finished today uh, is The Argonauts by Maggie Nelson and this has been recommended to me for a couple of years now um, but I haven't I just haven't gotten around to reading it and it was gorgeous. Like the the writing style at first, um, I just didn't know what to expect and I didn't know sort of how to engage with it. And then once I got a few pages in, it made a lot more sense. And it's, a mem it's both like a memoir and it deals with critical theory. And so you have these stories of Maggie Nelson's life woven in with these thinkers um, of queer theory and gender theory and psychology and child psychology, um, all just sort of like woven in. It almost reads like a love letter to her partner. And also, uh, so it follows a, a kind of transformative period of time in the life of her partner while they are transitioning and while she is pregnant. And so it talks a lot about desire, about love and lust and relationship and relationship to child, relationship to parents, relationship to lover, uh, relationship to life partner, and does so through the lens of theory. I actually ended up having to take a pencil out and an underline um, sentiments because it just so thoughtful. It's thoughtful and it's funny and it's just, it, it like, it expanded my mind. And it was also really great to read a book um, by an author who is queer about a queer relationship. I think that that is a space that I have room to grow in, in terms of reading um, about, you know, trans identities. It is, it is from a cis woman. Yeah, no, it's good to read uh, about different identities and I would give this a five out of five. It was gorgeous and I really enjoyed it. So the last book that I am currently working my way through um, is Meat and White Supremacy by La Leila Saad. 
and um, I'm doing the Kindle version, the ebook. So I'll just put the cover somewhere here. Um, and it is a really great book that is both educational and reflective. It's structured so that you could do a chapter a day, basically a section a day and it's over 28 days, or you can sort of pick your pace with it. But it's got a, an informational sort of educational section, a part of the chapter where uh, Layla talks about either, you know, a soft, talks about a topic like white privilege, white fragility, um, tone policing, these are the first few chapters. And then talks not only about her own experiences, but also just some, you know, theory around it. And then you've got questions that you can then take that and apply and think through your own life. And that's where the real work starts, is, is thinking through, you know, how have I benefited from these things? What are moments when I've weaponized some of these things? Where are places, um, what are situations where this has flared up in me? And, and take it and, and bring it into your own life. Um, and so I've been in, really enjoying working through it. I enjoying is a weird word because it's hard and it's painful, um, but it's been meaningful. I think that's a better word. I, it's been really meaningful to, to work through it and um, to contextualize a lot of these, these subjects, these theories, these um, things you read you know, on Instagram within the context of your own life and your own actions and your own thoughts and your own impulses and, and reactions. And, um, and to do some of that work on my own so that I can then show up um, to activism in, in a more thoughtful, nuanced way. So that's been the last book I've been reading. I'm working my, through it, my, my way through it and um, I'm very grateful to be. And that wraps up the books that I wanna talk about in this video. But stick around, there will be more. Uh, as always, please subscribe to this channel. Please give this video a thumbs up if it is something you enjoyed watching. Leave a comment if you have also read any of the books that I have mentioned and wanna chat about it. I love chatting with people in the comments. It's actually one of my favorite things about making these videos. And I hope you all are safe and well and are wearing masks and taking care of yourself. And I will see you in the next video. All right, cheers guys.